This DVD records something of the story behind the foundation of Wire Women's Information. It reflects a project undertaken in 2008 by a group of students from Santa Maria Secondary College, who interviewed a few of those involved in those early years in the 1980s, and some of Wire's staff today. The girls took the footage and devised their own questions. The project began with an afternoon tea at the school where they met each other. So, go for it. Over to the girls. What were the main reasons you all got together to set up fire? Well, there was a lot of um, various pressures at that time that women were experiencing. And I came to it from the point of view that I was a member of the Labour Party and uh, the Labour Party, I felt, should do something about providing a service for women that was an information service and a, and a telephone service. <coughs> the reason that I felt like that was also was contributed to by the fact that I worked in a women's refuge as a coordinator for two years. So there were very basic reasons that I got involved and they were really to help women who were in really quite desperate situations as well as other women that might require information in the suburbs, and that's the reason I got involved. Well, I came from the opposite end of the spectrum in the sense that I came by the Liberal Party. We all knew of cases where there was an immense need to provide information to women so that they could then access services. And certainly in my work as a counsellor at Box Hill, uh, through the Community Youth Support Scheme, uh, there were clearly group, a, a significant group within our community who were severely disadvantaged and that there had to be ways to provide them with help and support. So that, I guess, was the starting off point uh, from, from me. Well, I uh, am a member of Women's Electoral Lobby, well, and uh, in the late 1970s, earlier than perhaps uh, Kay and Rosemary were involved, uh, well was concerned at what was going on. Uh, I was a local government councillor too, but uh, it, my interest really came from, the, from well, and I had also attended uh, and helped people at the refuge, that had, the original refuge in uh, Melbourne, which was set up in Kew, where I lived. So beginning organising uh, rather an extraordinary sort of approach at that stage, uh, people didn't think in those sort of terms then. Uh, it, it took a whole lot of thinking through and arguing and discussions uh, and sitting on the floor for hours and hours and hours, as I remember. <laughs> okay. um, I came from a different path. I was a student activist. I um, was very involved in women's liberation and gay liberation on university campuses. Because we come from the 70s where women were told they couldn't drive trams because they got periods. Um, in the 60s and early 70s, if you were a teacher and you got married, then you had to resign. You couldn't work. Oh, so, the same in the public service. Yeah. Yeah. So, I had to resign. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, uh, you know, women's liberation in particular was really looking at <coughs> role models for women, giving women more choice, and that included choice in personal life, such as, you know, health, fertility control, all those kinds of things, but also in the broader world in terms of access to jobs across the range that were available, and also political life, and you know, all spheres of life. So that's, uh, I was coming on, um, at it from the point of view of a political activist. I guess I was a political activist too, but not in quite the same way as no. you were. Well, well, we all were. We all were. Yes. yes. Uh, I mean, later it was uh, well. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. sleep group. Yeah. And what we understood is, you don't get change when when you're looking for system-wide change and attitude change unless there is a political push behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we say political, you, it's not entirely always party political. It's and being able to um, put your case in a in a very uh, sensible way that people will, will agree. Um, you have to try to cast your mind back to what it was like in the late 70s uh, and early 80s because uh, some of the things that Philomena said you could take much further. A woman couldn't have an operation without the 
permission of her, of her husband mm -hmm. or her father, that is a medical operation. And women didn't have uh, claim to their children in the same as they do if there's a divorce or a separation. Mm -hmm. They almost always in, they had to fight for their children. There was no, 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 um, no fault divorce. Mm -hmm. Someone had to be found to be uh, committing adultery mm -hmm. or uh, desertion. Mm -hmm. And there was no support for women other than widows. So women gave up their children uh, if they were not married for adoption. Uh, and so there was so many things happening at once. It was um, a very exciting time to come out of a very oppressive time for women. And uh, men weren't really happy about all this. <laughs> To say the least. To say the least. They couldn't see very much reason for change, but the women across the board mostly could see there needed to be some sort of change. We, some of us, felt that there needed to be very strong change, while some women felt that there only needed to be little bits of change. So um, uh, what, what we had to do is convince a lot of people that there needed to be an information service, that it wouldn't be a threat to anybody, but in fact it, would, it was a necessary thing. So we, we had to prove, prove the case of, of need, and we had to prove that we could, in fact, run a service and not waste money, because giving money to women to do something at that stage was virtually unheard of. And, uh, and so when they thought, oh, it's at the end of the earth, I'll fritter this money away on something or other. So there was a whole lot of things that we needed to do, or the company of women that there were that did this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and as we've all said, it was a huge discussion. Sometimes there's not as big a discussion these days about how we're going to do things, but this was a groundbreaking, huge, multi-layered discussion among women across Victoria. The way that you know, groups had organised and Parliament organised them was, you know, you had the chair and you had, you know, people who were, you know, in charge and then you had the people below, whereas our view was that things needed to be more collaborative, what we call collective, and that the service should be, and this was a really radical thought for the time, the service should be run by women for women. So rather than have, a, you know, men there on the end of the phone or men running the service, that the women themselves we all knew what women wanted, what they needed. We were also open to listening, open to hearing what women wanted and needed, and that it would be run by women for women. Of course, which was a really radical notion at the time. So this is where women can drop in and speak to someone in person and get some face-to-face -face support and information referrals. So um, yeah, so we have the option of the telephone support, but people can come in here and get it in person. And we have things like free computer and internet access for women. So um, we run some free computer classes as well for women to learn how to use the internet and set up email accounts and all that kind of stuff. And we also have a job club. Um, that, we, that we've set up with another employment service and they have a worker who comes to help women with things like resumes and interview skills and application letters and looking for work um, because we get so many employment contacts. So there's heaps of different resources around the centre as well that women can take away on different kind of issues. This is where all the telephone support and information referral requests come through. So this is where all our trained volunteers um, volunteer on a shift each week. So. Because we're a general women's service, women can contact us about absolutely any kind of issue. So, but some of the main things that women often contact us about um, are things like domestic violence and emotional well-being and things around separation and looking for counselling for various kinds of things. So, a bit of everything.